My name is Gabriel Bierman. I hope that everyone is being sane, sanitized, and a little creative in the confines of your home. I've taken this time to answer a question that I've been asked so many years, and that is, hey Gabe, how many hats do you really own? So I've taken this time to kind of take out all of my hat boxes and put out some of my favorite hats. And we're gonna play a little game here. At the crunch of it, guys, I want you to guess how many hats that I own. I have 17 hat boxes here. There's more than one in often most of those hat boxes. The person or people that guess the correct number are gonna win a prize. And that prize is gonna be a free signed eight and a half by 11 print of your choice. All right, so uh, let's get to it. I've got my hats here. Let me, uh, all right, there, that's better. I've got my hats divided into a couple different things. First, we've got our straw hats, then we've got our felt hats, and then we've got sort of our other hats. So let's first break down the straw hats. I am wearing the straw hats when the weather gets nice, um, just to let the heat out of the summertime and let the cool breeze in. These straw hats started with the Panama hat, which ironically is made in Ecuador, uh, but was made famous because it was worn at the opening of the Panama Canal, okay? Uh, I got this one in Ecuador as well. This is a super fun hat and uh, not of the, usually the lighter colors, the white or tan colors. And I liked having other options like blue, black, tan uh, to go with the rest of my summer and uh, warm weather wardrobe. Now, when a lot of you guys see me on the road, I often have more than one hat, especially if I'm going to be there for more than one day. How do I do that without carrying with a hat box? Well, I invest in a lot of what we call crushable or foldable hats. And these hats basically aren't as stiff, right, as some of the other hats. And I can easily just kind of, you want to roll it, you know, not crush it or fold it, but you take it, flatten it out, and then roll it up like this, and easy to put in almost any bag uh, as you uh, get to your destination. When I get to that hotel, I then unroll it. One of the first things I do is unroll that hat and then give it a few minutes to get back into shape. So that is how I travel with multiple hats. Again, fun colors, often, you know, taking a look at different fun colors and different designs. This is a fun one I got from Miami. Notice no band, but kind of fun stitching on that. We have a classic Stetson hat, and then I have a Sisal hat there. Very lightweight uh, fabric on that one. All right, let's put these back in. And then let's go to the more standard. Now these are all under the fedora family, whether they're the straw hats or whether they're the felt hats or whether they're the cloth uh, or even pork pie style hats. So with the, 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 the are more styles of the felt fedoras out there than anything else. And I've definitely sort of taken my time and the, this is one of my most recent ones, which I was finally excited to get a lighter color felt hat. This is uh, also by Stetson and it has the uh, crown crease on the top a three-inch uh, a th a three brim, thank you, th a three-inch brim, and a small little band there. But notice the, uh, the airline right there, that, the, uh, the, the airplane right there. That's a nice little note for the Stratoliner and a nice clean inside whip there as well. This is also a recent purchase from JJ Hats uh, during their Black Friday sale in uh, November. And the uh, really, you know, wanted to get I was really taken by this one, another, my typical style of that two and a half to three inch brim crown uh, crease on the top, but I really like this band. You know, it's a little bit different style of, of uh, the uh, band that I could get, but different colors. Here's a nice oxblood one to kind of mix things up. And here is a, uh, another crushable. This is a popular one to travel with. This one's super fun, a brushed felt. So it kind of looks a little bit more animal-like, you know, round. And um, also up at the top here, I've got one of the few tri trilbies or stingy uh, hats. This one has a very small brim. This is like a one inch or three and a half, or a, uh, three, and a, a three and a half inch brim there. Um, and these were made popular in the 80s, uh, back at those, you know, so you can, the, with the ska people, right? You know, you wear this and it goes perfectly with that skinny tie. Um, super fun to kind of look at how the different types of hats styles, uh, brim sizes, 
really kind of shape your face and then go with the rest of your outfit. Okay, the one I'm wearing right now, actually one of my favorite hats and also a fairly new new to the correct collection, Native Rabbit Hair. Um, had was introduced to this gentleman in the Lower East Side who hand makes hats and it was really wonderful to go to his shop and invest in really something quite unique and special. Okay, finally we've got a couple of uh, pork pie hats. I have a few of those, these and just look at the difference between these pork pie hats. This crease here is called a, a telescope crease because it's just a circular and really no crease to it right there. And this was actually one of my uh, first really serious hats. Bought this in New Orleans, some great hat shops in New Orleans. And then this one is of a more of the crown crease uh, see at the top. And this is called the Smoker by Gorin Brothers. And Gorin Brothers, popular hat shop. You can find them pretty much all over the United States. Really fun interior there. Um, another Gorin hat here. This is a cloth hat. Okay, so these are fun for the in-between season, spring and fall. And another fun interior. Fun fact, I actually have a tie that matches that band. So always nice when you can bring it all together. So Gabe, what was the first hat, really the first fedora that you got? Well, I have it right here. It's still in the collection. Doesn't get as much use anymore, but it's this one right here. It's uh, made by Hilton. I don't know if this is a uh, leftover of, from the, um, you know, from the hotel chain, but pick this up in Amsterdam when I was out there with my dad, cousin, and uncle and went to a vintage hat store and I just, I don't know, I really, I was, I was a baseball hat wearer at the time, picked this up to be just a little fun and uh, I've been wearing it for a while. It hasn't gotten, you know, again, the last five, 10 years hasn't gotten this that much use again. I picked it up in probably 2002 and 2003. How did I transition? You know, so what, how many hats do I have? Again, we're talking about fedoras, not baseball hats, not like caps like these. You know, we'll get that, into that in another episode. Um, but how did I transition from baseball hats to fedoras? Photography really was the answer. You know, when I was uh, lifting the camera up while wearing a baseball cap forward, as it's really made to be used, it's often that hat would go get bumped up. And it was just like, it was not, it was preventing me from interacting with the rest of the scene. And the beauty of the fedora is you bring that camera up and it just, it plays with it plays with it. it you know it creases back pops back you know you're still getting the shade you're still getting the style and the look uh, but you're not having that interference so you early in 2003 or 4 I started wearing less baseball hats and investing more in fedoras okay so again that's gonna do it for uh, this episode on Gabe's fedoras remember in the comments below Guess how many hats, one guess per person, please. Guess how many hats that I own currently, and you will win a free print. So thank you for your time, and stay creative out there.